Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Building a Nation with Polonia Vorshevar. We're on the page of David Hoja. You might notice is now a Roma player. This has been a very frustrating transfer window, it's fair to say, not least because of this. So essentially, Premier League clubs are a thing now. The other leagues are on, which means that the vultures began circling like nobody's business. And eventually, we got a bid in from Bournemouth of 800k for him, and I thought, because uh, he had a release clause of 1.2 million and my concern was that we'd have a Darius Zuba situation on our hands we couldn't extend the contract remember we bought him for 100k and he wasn't on super big money just yet so that's the most we could offer him uh it was a frustrating situation really but I thought it'd be sensible this time and try to actually negotiate the deal and I'd actually got it to the point where they were paying a million up front and also like another 2 million in add-ons because as long as they don't pay the fee of 1.2 million then the release clause isn't triggered and I got them on a deal for a million up front and then 2 million in add-ons plus a 50% of next sale fee clause and I was about to mug them off royally when in came Roma and triggered his release clause for 1.2 million and then the deal fell through. God damn it. I understand why the board had to accept it because of the contract, but my god, we were about to pull off a coup there. We've also had bids from Burnley for just about everyone in our squad, apparently. They've put bids in for Pomorski, they put bids in for Vujovic, they put bids in for Fijacic. Um, Burnley are just after all of our players. I think they were in for this guy and all, to be honest, once Roma had triggered the clause. But the good news is he is actually the only player that has left the club currently, and that is quite the surprise. Why do you change the players' numbers every season? Okay, so the simple reason for this one is when I didn't used to do that, people complained that the, play the team often had high numbers in the squad because often when you're auto-picking, you know, newer players get shoved towards the end of the line. That's why I do it. At the end of the day, I, I can't win really, can I? <laughs> Mateusz Klickety-Clack, despite only being a squad player, has already made a name for himself in the team after impressing the squad with his amazing tap-dancing skills. Does not surprise me one bit. Now Camille's replacement is playing, I've just realised how good Camille's injury record was. Yeah, he really was good for the last couple of years. He's always been a around that squad and never really getting injured. If anything, he's had more injuries this year, just like everyone else, to be fair. The Polish Messi returns. This is why you don't give up on a player as skilled as him. There will be one or two swamps in this FM, but attributes like this don't lie. True. I mean, we didn't really give up on him. He just had a really poor season last year. It wasn't really a slump. That was an entire year of his career where he was pretty woeful for the most part. Uh, but this year, he's certainly got better. He's had his little slumps and stuff still, but the consistency issues for me really do tell. And I feel like with a player in that role that doesn't have those problems with that same abilities, I think they could be a world beater. Also, Conifal won player of the year for the second season in a row he's been player of the season, or player of the year. Anyway, we've had one game off camera. I'll quickly show you that now, and then something else we need to discuss. So our final game of the first half of the season, we did manage to get a winner, deserved one in the end. This was really nice because it sort of summed up why I wanted Tony and Victor Hugo in this squad. T Fiatic slips the ball into the channel, uh, Tony whips it across and there was Victor Hugo at the back post to deliver it into the back of the net. The two combining is really, really nice to see. Another good performance. Pomorski's done a really good job of filling in for Kokoschka and that really opened him up to um, bids from clubs, unfortunately. And he got very annoyed at me because I wouldn't let him leave for like 40 grand, which is so stupid. Burnley put a bid of £40,000 in and he was like, yes, I think that's an acceptable amount. And you can see that there's a lot of clubs interested in him now. However, this is the key thing. There's a bid on the tape. Okay, so I was actually going to show you guys something else here, but the game has just screwed me, and I don't know how it's done this. I had a deal agreed with Katowice with 5 million up front for Pomorski. That's why I was, I was so surprised that they actually accepted my suggestion. And now it's saying that I've accepted a bid of 2 million, but I didn't. I had a... The bid was 6.25 million. So I've, I've just cancelled the deal because it's changed my negotiation after I'd agreed the deal. I even did the persuade to join thing because I wanted to see if I could push the deal through. Not because I don't like the guy, but because if anyone's offering six and a half million for one of my players when they're not worth that, I was going to go through with the deal. That's pissed me off massively. Anyway, moving along, uh, has anyone seen anything like that before where the transfer deal has changed when you've accepted it? They're in good form at the moment, Rakov, up into sixth in the league, unfortunately. Yamrog's still not playing for him particularly often, because of course not. Um, We still need to keep the, the pressure on Lehi, and this is going to be really difficult, because if we win today, we go one point behind them, and then we have to play them coming later, so that's going to be fun as hell. Uh, some slight issues here, though. So, not really sure who's going to be in the team. I'll just do a quick pick to freshen things up a little bit. Um, Tony Fiacic, Carballo, yeah, he's back. Um, Victor Hugo there. Todorov, Patinho, yeah, I think Gorka's injured, isn't he? And Pilar's gone out on loan uh, for a season because they offered him loads of money, and he just wasn't really fitting in with it. I think the height is the issue. So on the bench, we're going to go with Vujovic, Kaslik, Kuharski, Zayats, Siratsky, Zaborowski, and Hamil. It's just nice to see Herman Carballo back. He's been the man that's really linked up nicely with Fiacic this season. Uh, I think it's no surprise that he's been on the pitch for most of Fiacic's goals. They play a standard sort of style. No surprises there. Yamrog actually in the squad. Good lord. Right, I guess we should just go out there and give this a crack, I guess. They're not playing a 4-4-2, which is something they almost always did in the past. 
Um, we're in good form recently. Haven't lost for a long, long time since the 1st of October. And that was that one against Wodge. So we really have been very, very solid. Pomorski's done a fantastic job of coming in in that role. I've got to say, he's stepped into the fold brilliantly in place of Kokoschka. Victor Hugo, out wide for Tony. Not great. I think the other thing that's impressed me is that we finally managed to get a little run of games with both Tony and Victor Hugo in the team without them picking up any injuries. It's only been like three matches, but we have, I think, won all three of them, or it's certainly not been bad in them anyway. Uh, Giovanioli, nice work, actually. Knocks it on for Tony. Here we go. This is where they, they flourished. Fiasic, since it's for Carbello, he's already in. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know why he passed the ball there. He would have been much better off taking the shot on Carballo. I'm not sure why he didn't. Pomorski. He's got quite a good long throw on him too, actually. Todorov knocks it down for Carballo. Get it back out there again. Get a good ball in now. Gets to that post. Tony, it's a bit too deep. Conifal maybe to whip one across. Fiacic! Oh, really good header from Fiacic, but not quite. The injuries, man. The injuries this season are ridiculous. Tony, here we go. He's going to have a little run at them. We need Victor Hugo. Where is he? There he is! And there he is. It's the back of the net. And we've scored a... Is this going to be disallowed? No. I thought that was onside to me personally, but we'll see, I suppose. Uh, no, it appears that it has been given from the looks of it anyway. Tony, this is great work from him. He just does this so well to get into this position. Digs a cross out. And there's Victor Hugo. It's 1-0 to Polonia Vorshava. Those two combining again. And that's what we needed. It's been an even game in a lot of ways, but we've created the chances. And that's the key thing for me. Good stuff. Couldn't have asked for a better first half, really. 1-0 up. Away at Rakov. Tony and Victor Hugo linking up the way they did in the last match as well. You know, that that got us the win in that game. And it looks like at the moment it could get us the win in this one too, which is exactly what they're here for. Carballo, these tight matches that might have ended nil-nil last year, that's what they're in the team for, to get them get us the wins in these. No, they've got men over and that's a goal. What a save from Neugebauer. Terrific save from the goalkeeper. I'm looking at another goalkeeper at the moment too, potentially, but they want a bit too much money for him. Flicked on. Oh, come on. Oh, hello, we've won it. Fiacic into the channel for Victor Hugo. Now we need some men running in there. Somebody ball in. Fiacic! Yes! There we go. It's 2-0 up. Wojciech Fiacic. Victor Hugo. A goal and an assist for him today. He's actually had a really good season. He had a really tough start. Nice work. Fiacic starts the playoff. Victor Hugo out wide. We've caught them out here, really. Just takes his time. Eventually whips one across. And there's Fiacic. I think he actually goes with his foot. He does. 13th of the season for him. 12th in the league. And that is great stuff. Lovely goal. Connor fell again. Vujovic. Oh my god, look at the space. He could go for a goal and he nearly does there, Carballo. He's so dangerous. If we could get a bit faster to that second ball, we might have a chance for a breakaway here. Fiacic again into the channel for Victor Hugo. Oh, can he sweep it across for Carballo? He doesn't. Vujovic. Oh, space out to the left. Siratsky's got a good cross on him. Goes back for Zaborowski. Somebody to go cross out. Zaborowski, this is really nice football. Oh, nearly in at the back post there. Go on. Yamrog's throw. Headed away by Mane. And there we go. A 2-0 win away at Rakov. That is a hugely satisfying win. Tony was excellent. Victor Hugo was excellent. Fiacic was excellent. Another win. Another clean sheet. And we go five points clear of Legia. And only one point behind Legia. We could go top finally if we come up with a win in the next game. But I still have a horrible feeling. But let's get straight to that now. See what happens in the off-camera bit. Okay, so we're back. No updates on the Pomorski thing. Um, I don't know what that was about. I'm going to keep monitoring that because he is still expecting to leave the club now. Even though I never told him he could. I don't know. Weird. Um, also, I totally forgot. I actually brought in a player. This is he. This is Alain Proudhon, who's coming from Valencia over in France. Um, defensive midfielder. I feel like he's a better option than someone like Stanislav Pila. He's got that extra height that I think is really going to be quite useful for him. So he's coming. Uh, it's like 700 up front and up to 1.3 million. Basically, just just dumped the Hoja money straight into him, basically. Also, on a slightly worse piece of business, Clint Lemons has joined us. They remember him from the Stockport save. I think he played for Stockport. He's coming just to boost our options in those midfield numbers, and I think that could be quite useful for us. And he has 16 penalty taking, and yeah, hopefully he'll do better for us than he did for Stockport. Anyway, let's get into today's game. This is the biggest game we've had this season um other teams have dropped points again we're currently four above leggy and a win here will push us seven clear and we'd go to the top of the division for the first time properly really in our history since i've been at the club basically and it would really start to cut adrift everyone below uh well basically everyone below the top two and that's what i really want uh a win here would push us what Seven points above Legia. huge right let's see what we can do so fiagic can play he's fine todorov absolutely cannot <laughs> you just simply cannot. I'm going to give Clint Lemons a chance in the midfield, frankly, because I feel like he deserves it. Um, and if we get a penalty, we might actually score it. I'm going to bring back uh, Vinjevic as well. Pomorski's there, Giovanioli, Neugebauer, everybody else I'm right with. That should be fine. That being said, I really don't think we could ignore the fact that Gorka's just been better this year than Patino, and I'm going to give him another chance, frankly. 
Okay, they're playing 4-4-2. That's not good to know. <laughs> We're just going to have to do our best. We've beaten these guys in the past, albeit I think they played a different system, but it can be done. It's Legia we always struggle against. Right, let's go. They've got Jonas Lossel in goal. I'm going to switch to the other style, but not to attacking. Just leave it on positive. Let's sort of play around them a bit. Let's have this. This is going to be crazy difficult. But it is the home game. This is the chance we've got to go top now and start to try and stretch our legs a little bit. We've been playing really well recently. Let's make it a little bit more today. The system wants us to be more direct, but... Oh, this is nice work, actually. Tony pulls it back for Lemons. Oh, imagine if he'd scored, like, 17 minutes into his debut. Well, possession-wise, we're in total control of this match so far. We just need to make the breakthrough. Might even go to attacking at some point, if we can feel about it. Come oh, good save by Lursel. Okay, we're looking like a better side right now, which is really good to see. Mm, they really pulled the possession back towards the end of the half. They are just trying to stymie us at every step here i don't want to go to attacking either because i the, losing this game is far worse than not winning like a draw isn't great but a draw on the other hand would at least allow us to still only be a point behind them but if we lose we go four points behind and they start to pull away from us obviously the win is the main thing but you know if we can avoid defeat that's really still a good step for us okay here we go tony oh comes back to him has he got another one in him he might. Oh, blocked in the end. This is looking like it could be a stalemate. Not exactly a top of the table clash you'd hope to see as a fan, I suppose. Tony's ball in. Saved by the goalkeeper in the end. At the moment, we are barreling towards a nil-nil draw. Which, again, as I said, I would take uh, because of the fact that it would... Oh, no. Totally dead even game and we're going to lose again. Why is it with us in the top of the table clashes in the league? Look at some of the performances we put in in Europe against Arsenal and Bilbao. And then, uh, Kocinevsky strikes it straight down the middle and Neugebauer just punches it into his own net. Dead even game and yet again we're going to come out the wrong side. I don't believe it. It's starting to get a little bit ridiculous how bad we are or how bad the fortune... Oh, what? And now here we go. Now comes the bad touches. Watch us go on a dreadful run in the league all of a sudden now. Despite not being having lost a game since October. A Wanyi stripping through people. Saved by Neugebauer in the end there and oh my god. God. The nil-nil draw would have been just fine, frankly. It would have kept us right in the race, but now we're going to be four points behind them and having lost to them at home. Um, Samiento. Oh, smashes that one wide, and we've just lost the plot here. Got the ball back, though. With Darson. Out wide. Do you have any early? We need men in the box. We need them soon. Ah. Oh. Tony whips the ball in. It's over the line! Wait. Is this going to be a penalty? It is, and I've taken off Lehmann's. Watch Victor Hugo miss this penalty now. Oh, it's Gorka. He scored it! Come on, Gorks! Yes, lad. 1-1. One, one. Oh, just turning it back down to positive. Gorka's first goal of the season. 90th minute penalty. Hopefully has just bailed us out a point at home and keeps us in the title race. Um, oh, dear. It was, it was rolling over the line anyway, but it looks like it is going to be... Oh, oh, don't you dare. Oh, Neugebauer makes the stop. Well played, lad. Go on. Is there one last thing in the tail? Unless... One last big throw from Giovanioli. Can we come up with something magical here? Probably not, no. Good ball in, perhaps? Go short for Tony. Oh! If that's a little bit more accurate, we might have a chance there, and that surely is going to be the last kick of the game. Gorka's throw. Vitharsen. Oh, 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 and that will do it. Polonia won, Alejio won. We've got away with a point. I think we deserved the point based on the balance of play. Um, could have been so much worse. We stay unbeaten for a little while, which is really nice. And we've managed to score against them, albeit from the spot. And it keeps us in the hunt at the top of the league. That's the main thing. I just didn't want them to get away from us. I believe we're still firmly in that title race. And the rest of this year is going to get very, very interesting. So, what do we fancy? Uh, Leggy is... I suppose we could do a nice little safe little double live con there of Legia and Swans because they'll be tight tough games just a, a little bit casual just slow things down a little bit um just try to get our feeling back a little bit in the moment after that um yeah let's do that actually let's do so we've got this one off camera we'll do less pause and off camera as well we'll come back and do Legia and maybe actually do some games in the middle off camera or something um as well we can get through a little bit more of the season in that one too so if you've enjoyed this episode and I hope you have drop a like on the video we're still unbeaten since October 1st. It's been quite a while, which is nice. Drop a like on the video, that'd be awesome. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe, that'd be brilliant as well. And I'll join you guys in the next episode. We're going to play against Legia because I really want another crack at trying to beat them. What is our record against Legia? Past meetings. Uh, yeah, it, it's not been excellent, has it really? Uh, we beat them once and that wasn't even in the league, was it? <laughs> oh, dearie me. We've got to improve. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.